Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Shuya Studies class. My name is Solishola OO. I will be taking you Shuya Studies. Although this afternoon we'll be taking the preliminary topic of the Shusha studies because this is our first meeting. So we're looking at three sub edits. We we'll talk about we're going to talk about the definition of Shusha study. Then we're also going to talk about the nature of Shusha study. Then we are going to talk about the importance of Shusha study as well. So we're talking about these three things this afternoon. So we are going to take the definition aspect of the class first, which is the definition to the concept of social studies. Although social studies has been defined by different teachers from the discipline of social science because the subject social study is under social science discipline and of course having Ghana and is a mind all these definitions these various teachers settle on the same subject matter about social studies subject matter in the sense that they view social studies from the same direction the differences in their opinions is the use of words or languages so this simply means that whichever and in whatever direction you want to define your studies or discuss your studies is still going to center on the same subject matter and the general definition of this concept is that social studies is a study of man and is social and physical environment social and physical environment the study of man and a social and physical environment so this means that man cannot be separated from his environment either from its social environment or physical environment in cool it simply means that man is the main subject matter of social studies and when we talk of man we are not referring to a single man the word man here simply means people and when we talk of people in this social concept we simply mean male and female men and women because our social environment and physical environment made up these two genders although we have some genders we classify under neutral gender but in the social environment and the physical environment of man we have just the masculine and feminine so man is the center of study or social study because when we talk of social social has to do with society and the advanced 
study of social studies is what we refer to as sociology. So you can say sociology center on society. And when we talk of society, we also point to man. So the central idea and analogy of social study is man. So whatever we are going to discuss or all the topics that we, are, we shall discuss in this content or in this subject matter is going to center on man and man and man and is mediates social and physical environment. So this is the definition of social studies. Anywhere in the world, this definition is proverbially accepted and acceptable by teachers. Then let's quickly look at the nature of social studies. The nature of social studies. From our definition, we derive two standing nature. So the nature of social studies we want to talk about is not far from the definition of social study. The essence of this nature is to widen our horizon, our knowledge, and broaden it the more about what definition of social study centered on. The first nature of social studies is what we call social environment social environment you know in the definition we we'll say social study is the study of man and is social environment so social studies centers on social environment now that the definition we say that man cannot be separated from his environment particularly the social environment and also the physical environment. Now, when we talk about the social environment, the social environment is that environment of man that allows man or people, that is both male and female, to interact. The social environment makes provision for social interaction. And I tell you, no man can survive on its own or alone. No man. So, man cannot be born into an environment that is isolatory in nature. And if by accident a man is born into an alophious world, that man cannot survive. In one way or the other, the man will have to locate somebody who looks like him, somebody who understands his language, somebody who has the same physical appearance like him, somebody who have the same thought pattern like himself, and somebody who he could speak to or interact with. That is social environment. And that is why man in, in, a, in the study of integrated science and biology say living things is divided into two, plant and animal. Even when we claim that man is an animal, man is not just a locodative animal. Man is a social animal. And because man is a social animal, man interacts with other social beings. And that interaction the communication takes place in the social environment or social community. And that is why man is born into a family, a human being family, not the animal's family. 
human family. So, the social environment is one of the nature of social studies that tells us that the environment that man is born into is for interaction, is for relationship, is for communication. So man is not born into a solitary environment or society. And that is why if you are a type that is called introvert, in one way or the other you talk to people. Yeah, because introverts are people with regards to us, very quiet type of people. But no matter what, because you are born into a family, and maybe perhaps you are not the firstborn, you have either brothers or either sister, then you must talk to them, you must communicate to them. And as a time you are in need, you speak out. So that is social environment. By the time you start school, you are enrolled to, into nursery class, you see others talking. Then before you leave, you remain quiet, somebody will come and knock on your head. By the time they knock on your head three, four, four, five, six times, you will raise voice. You are, you are indirectly interacting with people in that environment. That call for social. In one way or the other, you go out to go and play tip tennis, lawn tennis, football, volleyball, etc. Interaction takes place. You go to the market, you want to buy beans cake, beans mash, rice, beans, bread. All this, there is no how you will live in the environment of man without interaction. And all this put together is what we regard as the social environment of man. So man is a social being. The second nature of social study is what we refer to as the physical environment. You see, when we wonder that, does it mean that there are two environments or two worlds that man lives? Uh, let me not take you into philosophy and psychology, psychological studies. What we are saying here is still the same environment. It's still the same society. But what the of physical environment, we mean those things that exist in the same environment with man. Some of these things are naturally made and some are man-made. When we say something are naturally made, it means it is there, time without ages, that man cannot tell the age of some of these things. No man can tell us when tree came to life, how old the first man to plant tree. Man cannot tell us how land came. We met these things called natural. Man cannot tell us about sea. When sea came to be, how old is sea, rivers, forests, they are naturally made. But they are there for man's interests. That is, they are God and the work. And God make provision for destinies to come to be so that man can make use of them. So they are beneficiary to mankind. So these things are what we call physical environment of the society. So man also interact with them. Then when we talk about the man made in the physical environment of man, we mean those things that because man is a social being, Man has some level of intelligence. 
all, man is intellectually inclined as a social being. So man can think, and man can bring his thought into reality. And that is why if you look at uh, Mutalad Bridge in uh, Kogi State, it is man-made bridge. This man who used his philosophy from the power of, of his medulla oblagata to say, okay, well, there's a need for us to do something of this nature so that people, we can pass, we can cross over the river, we can cross over the sea. It is man-made. The little, little bridges in our communities, they are man-made. The road, in fact, quote and unquote, say it anywhere that Olushola Owo may mention that God did not create road. Yes, quote and unquote, God did not create road. So God only called land to come into being, and land came. So it is man who creates road. That oh, there's a need to to have a path for passage. So man uses initiative, initiative to construct road. So these are um, man-made physical environment. Then both man-made and natural made environment or things in the social environment are for man's beneficiary. So let me go to the third phase of today's topic, which is importance of social studies. That is the relevancy of social study. Is social study important? Why are we studying social study? Why is it a subject? And other questions in your mind. The point here we answer those body questions. One, social studies teaches us about the effects man has upon the environment and the effect of environment upon man. You see, this important is two sides of the coins. Man affected the environment. I told you that God created the environment. God created the universe. But God did not create cigarettes. God did not create marijuana. God did not create spirit. God did not create ego that some of your brothers and sisters take. Man created them. And in the course, a lot of people became mad. So man, so what man used to produce these things that I've mentioned is what things from environment, the natural environment. Then out of this natural environment, man produce the man made. And the man made affects man. Have you wonder? God did not create car. It is man who initiated the idea of car, motorcycle, helicopter, aeroplane. But today, on car table, a number of people met their water loo as a result of either driving car or entering car. God gave man leg, and that's our forefathers trek from one village to another village, trek from one town to another town, either to trade, either to visit, or for occasion. They trek, but today, because we say we are in a jet age and a lot of things, the idea of Banking. A lot of people have lost their resources as a result of putting money in bank. 
a lot of people have been duped. In fact, the idea of ATM, a lot of cyber cry, crime has come to, to stay. So, man affects the environment and the environment has affected man in return. So, should our study opens our eyes to understand this philosophy? Then should our study also teaches us the importance of knowledge, skills, attitudes, and value. That's number two. We want to talk of knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values. They are very, they are very sequential. Cool in our society. No man can survive in, this, in our war without knowledge. No man can survive without skills. Either traditional skill, maybe learning a trade, learning an apprentice, maybe like wedding, carpentry, and dress. No man going to school. The no man can also survive without good character that I call attitude dinner in nature. No man, the values. A man without value is a lost man. Value is very important, very relevant. Three, Shoya study teaches us to draw together our personal experience and the experience we can gain through learning in school. So what we are saying by this point is that your study encourages cooperation, unity in diversity. Let's take Nigeria as a study illustration. It's a pity that our historians and archaeologists don't even know the number of tribes in Nigeria. And that's why sometimes ago they told us that we have over 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria. But today, recently, as about three years ago, archaeologists came up that we have over 300 ethnic groups in Nigeria. So, over. So it means that we have more and more. But with this number of 300 ethnic groups in Nigeria, we are surviving. Why? Owing to what? Unity and cooperation. And that's why when you go to offices, you find different tribes and they work together in unity and harmony. So let's look at the number four points. So your study helps us to understand and to find answers to some questions or problems of life. So, so as to be able to see, and that's why it enables us to understand what, what psychology call individual differences. The way I behave, no man on earth can behave in that way. The way you also behave, no man on earth can behave in that way. Also, the way the outside people in court behave, no man or no tribe can behave in that manner as well. The way the evil people behave in court, no tribe can behave in that manner too. We are created in a unique way. So we are not the same. But with this differences we are able to work together in the same offices in the same department then this in fact even attend the same school in fact we have people who intermarry and they live google so just that it teaches us how to understand these things problems of life there are a lot of problems in life or in society today. But with some knowledge of 
understanding society and man, we are able to resolve this and work together. Then, just uh, they also help us to understand the weight of our culture and how to find ways by which we can use past and present experience to plan for the future. You see? History is a study of the past, present, and to foresee the future. So, and short study is a fruit of history. And I said there are some topics in short studies that relate to history. And that's why at times, our parent or a particular parent will will so conscious about a female child, particularly a girl. Look, I don't want to go with men. I don't want to see you with men. If you ask that parent, either the mother or the father, is from experience, and that is what your study is saying. Maybe the mother was put to family way, or. Well, the woman was preg pregnant out of wedlock, or maybe when the mother was very young at a tender age, somebody armed the woman. So, with that experience, the woman wants the same thing to happen to a gay child. That is the experience we are talking about here. So, the experience of yesterday help us to live the life we live today. And that's why some of us, the way we behave today is a result of the experience of yesterday. So if you meet some person that don't give help, it's because of the help they gave yesterday that result to what? That result to problem. If you some person that give help to people, it's because the help they gave yesterday he did a positive result, and so on and so forth. And that is why the Englishman says, experience is the best teacher. Let's go look at the last point here that I have for us. Trust study help us to realize our duties to ourselves and our nation. So as a member of the larger society called Nigeria, we have duties to your you have duty to yourself you have duty to your parents you have duty to render to your brothers you have duty to render to your sisters you have duty to render to your neighbors you have duty to render to your community you have duty to render to your local government you have duty to render to your state and at large you have duty to render to nigeria and if opportunity permits you, you have duty to render to the whole world. So that's what they give us, us this understanding. It enlightens our horizon to see this. So, this is all for today. But before I leave, I have this assignment for us. With five other points, discuss why shared studies as a subject is important to your life. I take it again with five other points, apart from the one I've mentioned, discuss why shared studies as a subject is important to your life. So, do you have any question? Any question? So if there is no question, we have come to the end of today's class. If you are listening to this class from our YouTube video channel, I encourage you to continue to subscribe and encourage others to also subscribe. Thank you and God bless you.